Okay. Hurry up and wait. This is part of our society. We do this a lot. Like imagine you go to the airport and you get in the security line as fast as you can. And then you wait. And then you get through security. And then you get to your gate as fast as you can. And then we wait. We do a lot of this kind of waiting. Or how about just driving around Baltimore? It's like a race to get to the next stoplight. And then you wait. And then you race to the next stoplight and then wait some more. Hurry up and wait. This morning we hear about waiting. We hear Jesus talk about this end of the world kind of stuff and about what is this to come. And what he's talking about is waiting on Jesus to come again. All good things come to those who wait. Or the early bird gets the worm. Which is it? If we wait long enough, will good things happen eventually? Or do we go out and be proactive and do? Maybe a little bit of both. Jesus tells us, do not be alarmed in your waiting. It's going to be okay. The thing is, is when this was written, they thought Jesus was coming back like really soon. The author in the Gospel of Mark is, is writing to the early church in Galilee. And, and they thought Jesus was going to be gone like a few years, like maybe a decade. But certainly that they would see Jesus again in their lifetime. So it's 2,000 years later. How long are we supposed to wait? What do we do with all this waiting around? Is Jesus ever coming? Our waiting after 2,000 years looks a little differently than that early church that Mark was writing to. We've been waiting for Jesus so long that I bet you no one in this room expects to see Jesus in our lifetime. That's what we're used to. But we still believe in this promise. And we profess each week in our creed that we believe that Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. How long do we have to wait for it? The season of Advent is almost upon us. This is the season we have in the church year that is built into the church calendar that's all about waiting for Jesus. Now, we'll start celebrating it in a couple of weeks. But by some accounting, it's already started. There's probably people out there that have already decorated their houses for Christmas, haven't you? On the Thursday was the commemoration of St. Martin of Tours, uh, which marks 40 days until Christmas. And some really more churchy folks would say that this is the beginning of Advent, um, St. Martin's Advent, um, because 40 is a pretty big biblical holy number. And if it gave you just a little bit of anxiety that I said we're less than 40 days from Christmas, <laughs> don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> but we are, we're officially less than 40 days until Christmas. The waiting for Jesus has begun, waiting on this kingdom of God. Hurry up and wait. This sure describes the holiday season a lot to me. Black Friday, standing in stores, just more people on the roads this time of year. Hurry up and wait. I think a part of this phrase's truth is that we are not very good at waiting as humans by nature. Kind of an oxymoron, hurry up and wait, isn't it? And our society continues to teach us more and more to be impatient. We can get anything that we want pretty much by a couple of clicks of the mouse or a couple of taps on your phone delivered to your home almost instantly. But some things 
are worth the wait, aren't they? Just one pregnant lady comment, like a baby, for instance. <laughs> there are things in life that are worth the wait. And I would say that Jesus is one of them. But it's a little bit more complicated than just waiting, because what do we do? We just sit around, we twiddle our thumbs. That's not the kind of waiting that Jesus is calling us into. Because the part of our waiting process is also preparation. Like a baby, for instance, a lot goes into that waiting period of preparation for a baby. And so does our waiting on Jesus time. And the thing with Advent is it's more than just waiting for Christmas to come, waiting for a baby. Advent itself is actually about talking about waiting for Jesus to come back, that thing those disciples are waiting for. And so for four weeks, all of the readings are a little bit apocalyptic, end of the worldy. And you're like, that doesn't sound like Christmas. It's because technically it's not about the baby. It's about what we're waiting for now. We're waiting on Jesus. And while we celebrate this time of waiting for coming to Christ, we do couple it with the birth of Jesus for this reason, in my opinion. Just so you know, I didn't set up the church calendar. This is purely my opinion about why we put these together. Because part of our waiting on Jesus in this preparation time, it's different than just being doomsday preppers. We're not waiting for the end of the world. We're waiting for new life. We are celebrating and preparing like the coming of a baby. So Jesus is coming. How do we wait? Well, Jesus um, is pretty good about giving us some hints about how we do this. You've heard them. Love your neighbor. It's a good one. Care for the poor and the orphan. When you do these things for the least of these, you do them for me. We are to spend this time of waiting for Jesus in preparation, preparing for the kingdom of God, preparing our world, ourselves, our communities through these acts that Jesus invites us into, into love, into service, into grace and mercy and justice. We don't know when Jesus is coming, but Jesus has given us a little bit to do while we wait. Life is one big advent. What will you do with this time? How will you wait on Jesus? Angrily at a stoplight, inching forward slowly? Or making radical choices to share the love and grace that Jesus has asked us to share? That's our big Advent question this year. How do we wait on Jesus? Amen. <laughs>